Now, these memoirs include memoirs from Ivor Wilkes, for example. Ivor Wilkes knew Nehemia when he first came to Ghana. He tells a wonderful story of how Nehemia's Jewishness and focus on northern Ghana and Arabic manuscripts was controversial in the early days of establishing African studies at Legon. I don't know how many of you know these stories, but I certainly had never heard them before. W.B. Du Bois, Ivor Wilkes, Nehemia Lapsian, Kwame Nkrumah, all involved in defining how African studies, one of the earliest centers in West Africa, was to be developed. Nehemia was a part of that. The story is in here. Roland Oliver, surely a name known to all who who work on Africa, has contributed a memoir. And if you'll forgive me one more red paragraph. Roland Oliver writes, my memories of Bahamia go back to 1962, when he came to the School of Oriental and African Studies in London University as a doctoral student after taking two earlier degrees at the Institute of Asian and African Studies at the Hebrew University, Jerusalem. He was already a competent Arabist, well-trained in both the written and the spoken language. And it was a time when most people with these hard-won qualifications would have sought a topic for research in the history of the Maghreb or the Middle East. But not Nehemia. Nehemia was already clear. He wanted to work on the spread of Islam in some parts of Africa south of the Sahara. And in due course, he settled on Ghana and adjacent parts of Burkina Faso, Togo, and Benin. He spent a full year of field research. And note I say field research. This is in the history, the, the discipline of history um, in the 1960s when field research belonged to anthropologists. He spent a full year of field research interviewing more than a thousand informants chosen from the Muslim clerics of the region. Roland Oliver says, I particularly remember a long talk I had with him during a visit to Ghana in 1964, when he explained to me that it was his command of Arabic which had aroused the welcome which he had received from these clerics, most of whom knew little Arabic themselves, but had a great respect for the language of the Quran. This had made them willing to entrust him with their family genealogies and other traditions, which had enabled him to work out the chronology of Muslim settlement in each ethnic division of his field. I repeat that this was in the 1960s. This is a kind of combined manuscript, field work, oral tradition, methodology that we are still working to perfect um, in African history. And this is something that today is expected of, of all students. At the time, and I hate to use this word, but it's absolutely true, he was literally pathbreaking in northern Ghana. And I will add that he did so in a Volkswagen Beetle with his, his wife geared up at his side um, and made a huge impression. Now, I've said that there are stories, there are memoirs in this book. One of the memoirs is from a colleague of ours who we all know and love, um, Martin Klein. And Martin Klein needs no introduction, no offense, Roger, because we have known Martin for many years. But Marty also knew Nehemia. Uh, in a personal and a professional way. And instead of reading from his contribution to this book, I would invite Martin to say a few words. When I first got involved in Africa in the 1960s, it was possible to get to know, there were people who became well known, not for the research they had done, but for the research they were doing. And I heard stories in those years of this Israeli who was wandering around northern Ghana and southern Burkina Faso, collecting traditions, interviewing imams and, and sheiks and, and, and doing this awesome history. And I, though I, I followed it, I followed Nehemiah's career, I was not myself an Islamicist. As I often tell people, I write about Muslim people, not about Islam. And, and, and so I didn't get to know him personally until several things happened. One is that he was invited 
to spend a month at the University of Toronto, and they kindly, and I say kindly, I seldom had a job I enjoyed more, put me in charge of him, of making sure he got established. It, it was a very easy job, because Nehemi and Terza were used to packing and unpacking, and they'd done it for years. And, and when you bumped around northern Ghana in a beetle in 1962 and 63, uh, adapting to the city of Toronto was really quite a, a, a piece of cake. Uh, and, uh, but it was also a chance for him, me to introduce him to my graduate students, for me to have lunch and dinner. Uh, it was also a chance for me to see the wide respect he commanded in different circles. Because as soon as I let people in Islamic studies knew, know that Nehemia was in Toronto, the invitations came pouring in. Uh, I later on got to know him in meetings of the Mandy Studies Association, a small organization that both of us enjoy uh, very much, and, and one in which he showed his interest in people and other scholars, the same interest he showed he showed in Anne McDougall's work. And, and his, his wonderful uh, ability to relate to young African scholars. And finally, I visited him in Jerusalem and spent a, 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 a Friday night dinner, which I would be willing to discuss with anybody who's got more time than I have right now. Uh, all of which was was uh, pleasant for a number of reasons. One, he was a consummate scholar. Perhaps the most telling thing about Nehemia is though he re re often got called upon to do, uh, uh, to do things that were politically and socially important. He, he once told one of his students that he relaxed by curling up with old documents and doing research that it was in his bones, it was in his makeup. There were other things that I found intriguing about him as I got to know him. He, he was born and raised in southern, what was then Palestine, and, and his, he and his family had to flee the south during the, the war of 1948. And yet in spite of his experience, what marks his scholarship is a profound sympathy with and understanding of Islamic traditions. And it is, it is this, I think, which is this combination of, of this skill, this openness to others, and, and, the, uh, and the ability to relate to the people he was studying. What started in northern Ghana, I think, extended throughout his career. It was certainly present in months of meetings. Uh, it's just, and, and it was very important in Israel. When I say political work, I, I don't think he was involved in figuring out ways to dominate Palestinians. What he was figuring, what he was trying to do in much of his work within Israel is to get Israelis to understand the great tradition of Islam that they were confronting uh, by simply existing, by trying to create a state in the middle of the Muslim world, surrounded by Muslim countries. Uh, uh, like Anne, I was very much saddened. He, nah Nehemia, and Tursu were not only fine minds, uh, but very warm and hospitable people. And I, I. I guess my regret is every time I notice the birth and death dates, he was born a year after I was, and he was taken from us too soon. Thank you. All I want to do is we, we've underscored the man, Nehemi Alepsi, and I also want to point out that I had no trouble whatsoever finding people who were willing to contribute papers um, to this, engaging with the legacy volume. Ivor Wilkes, Martin Klein, David Robinson, John Ball, and by the way, John Ball has added an epilogue to the book that is not in the um, CJS uh, double volume, 
uh, evaluating the Hemiolepsian's work uh, with respect to Arab Spring. Um, we have uh, the archaeologists who worked with him on the Ghana Mali project, Susan Keach McIntosh, Rod McIntosh, David Conrad, the, 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 the expert in, in the uh, oral traditions of the region. And I would report, for those of you who are interested, this project is still underway. It is a kind of re-evaluation of Nehemiah's ancient Ghana and Mali. And I have it on good word from Rod uh, by email just a few days ago that uh, other people have stepped up to the plate. Paolo Farias has come in on the project and we are waiting for Rod to do his bit. So if any of you know Rod McIntosh, do feel free to send him an email and tell him to get on it. Um, another section of the book looks at how people have used some of Mahabia's ideas about Islam in Africa. His colleagues, uh, uh, Kuti Gershoni, former student, Iret Bach, a colleague many of us know and love, David Awansa Usa, Kenneth Harrow, um, and once again, uh, John Ball. My point in reading out these names is simply to say, this is somebody who has reached across different disciplines. Um, there's a, a, a chapter in here by a colleague of mine who works on, on Islamic music in Africa. He is reaching new generations. There is a chapter by a student who has written a, a, a fairly critical piece on translation. Uh, we are working across themes, across generations. And this book is meant to show that Nehemia is an integral part of how we are seeing Africa and Islam in Africa and Muslims in Africa. The last thing I want to say is that in addition to thanking my colleagues for their generosity in providing these papers, I would like to thank Nehemia's family. Nehemia's family is as large a part of this volume um, as we are. They have provided us with photos. They have provided us with uh, an unpublished uh, paper of Nehemia's, which only shortly thereafter came out in Jerusalem, but has not been published uh, in the West. They provided us with an invaluable speech that Nehemia gave himself on the occasion of his 60th birthday. Um, to me, this is very, very special, and I think to anyone who cares about the field, Islam, Africa, you will appreciate that bringing this material together is something incredibly special. It is an unusual volume. And for that, as I say, I thank both my colleagues um, and the Hamia's family. I would add, finally, that um, following his death, there was uh, an institute, uh, rather a center, the Nehemia Lapsian Center for Islamic Studies, established at the Hebrew University. They have a copy of our book. Um, they have uh, uh, announced it at the 8th Annual Nehemia Lapsian Lecture just uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the faculty and the center is hoping to uh, arrange some kind of celebration, some kind of uh, memorial, celebration for the book, memorial for Nehemia within, within the next year. Uh, they know about our launching today. They wish us well, and I promised them that we would all toast our friend, our colleague, our family member, for some people, Nehemia loves him. So if you would join me to Nehemia, his family, and his legacy.